tactics. They right. just, you know, so you have, if you don't have what they need, they're going to leave. Right. Got to right. keep them there. Right. You need, you need locks on the doors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, this Let's, is sounding kind of dangerous now. It's a little kinky, but no, it'll, it'll go from like 9.30 to like maybe 3 o'clock, 2, 3 o'clock. And then, you know, we have the top two floors of the hotel. Mm-hmm. And then it will carry on there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then it, mm -hmm. No, I mean, um, the, the after party. Mm -hmm. No, I know about them. Check it out. You need um, a lot of heat. A lot heat. of heat. Yeah. Heat. You mean that physically the place has to be hot? You don't have no air conditioning. No air conditioning. No. Why is that? Heat affects the alcohol, and it also affects, like, um, you know, everybody gets a little bit more comfortable and loose. What if I told you the Diddy we thought we knew might be hiding a much darker side? With Diddy now behind bars, his old interviews are making a comeback. And some of these clips could be the very evidence used against him in court. We know Sean P. Diddy Combs as the music mogul who ruled the industry, but these resurfaced videos show a side of him that no one saw coming. From his shocking claim about trying to manipulate the royal brothers. Trust me, they're off the list. <laughs> now they're off the list, but you know, before when they were young bucks growing up and they were getting in a lot of trouble themselves, so hey, I was like, why don't you come hang out with me? To a disturbing confession about an adult entertainer catching fire at one of his parties. In the bathroom at the party, in the bathtub, in the jacuzzi with this shit, one of the hair got caught on fire. Because <laughs> of the candles. These are the interviews Diddy hopes will never make it to court, Diddy predicting his arrest. In a resurfaced interview, Diddy seemed to predict his own legal troubles before they happened. He was talking about his famous parties, saying they were the hottest ticket around. But then he made a strange comment that now feels like a warning. Diddy said, they're going to probably be arresting me, doing all types of crazy things just because we want to have a good time. At the time, most people probably thought he was joking. But now that he's facing serious charges, those words sound a lot more serious. He wasn't just talking about fun parties. He was hinting that authorities might come after him. Your parties are the hottest ticket around. They won't even give me a permit for the parties, man. They don't want me to throw the parties no more. Diddy also talked about how his parties brought together people from different backgrounds, breaking down racial barriers, and having celebrities like Jay-Z and Ron Perlman in the same room. He wanted people to think his parties were inclusive and groundbreaking. But now, many are questioning what was really going on at those events. Creepy moment with Conan O'Brien. In an unsettling interview on Conan, Diddy described a strange way of keeping guests at his infamous house parties. During the conversation, he explained how he liked to trap people at his events, and his explanation left many viewers feeling uneasy. Diddy talked about creating an environment where guests couldn't easily leave. He said, you need locks on the doors, and even Conan commented about it sounding kind of dangerous. They right. just, you know, so you have, if you don't have what they need, they're gonna leave. Right. Gotta right. keep them there. Right. You need, you need locks on the doors. <laughs> Okay, this is sounding kind of dangerous now. The conversation took an uncomfortable turn when Diddy described how the lack of air conditioning and intense heat at his parties played a role in his strategy to keep people there. He explained that the heat made people more relaxed, affecting their mood and loosening them up. His words came off as unsettling, especially in light of the ongoing allegations surrounding his parties. Diddy didn't stop there. He continued by explaining that the heat also affected how people drank alcohol, helping them build up a nice little sweat. What was intended as a joke about party planning quickly felt more like a description of manipulation. It was as if he was revealing a tactic to control his guests without them realizing it. Looking back at this interview, it's hard to ignore how creepy his comments now seem. What might have passed as humor at the time takes on a much darker tone as more details emerge about what really went on at Diddy's parties. It's a little kinky, but... Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Rock me, but just right. check it out. You need um, a lot of heat. A lot heat. of heat. Yeah. Heat. You mean that physically the place has to be hot? You don't have no air conditioning. The uncomfortable laughter on the show can't cover up how disturbing his words really were. Awkward Ellen DeGeneres interview. During Diddy's appearance on the Ellen DeGeneres show, he got into a casual conversation about his famous parties. Ellen playfully asked him if she was invited to his birthday party, and Diddy confirmed, saying she's always invited, she just never showed up. What made this part of the interview stand out was how Diddy nonchalantly described the nature of his events. He mentioned that his parties typically started around 9.30 p.m., which surprised Ellen as she thought his parties would kick off much later, like after midnight. Now, what time would your party start, let's say? Like 9.30. Really? That early? Yeah. I could make that. Yeah. <laughs> But I think I could think of you of, of starting a party at like midnight. 
Like what time will it go that, till? That's a different type of party though. Diddy then explained that while the official party might end around 2 or 3 a.m., the real fun continued at the top two floors of the hotel, with an exclusive after party for his inner circle. No, it, it'd go from like 9.30 to like maybe 3 o'clock, 2, 3 o'clock. And then, you know, we have the top two floors of the hotel. Mm -hmm. we'll... And then it will carry on there? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then it... Mm -hmm. No, I mean, the after party. Mm -hmm. No, I know about them. It was in this offhand remark that Diddy dropped hints about how these gatherings extended into more private, secluded settings. While Ellen played along with the conversation, it's hard not to read into it differently now, knowing what we do about Diddy's alleged party antics. The idea of the party going on for hours and then shifting to a more closed-off, hidden space now feels like a glimpse into the darker side of what was happening behind the scenes. At the time, this may have seemed like lighthearted banter, but in retrospect, these parties likely had a much more sinister undertone, especially given the allegations that have come out about Diddy's After Hours events. Eva Combs' involvement When you come across adoption stories, it's often filled with joy and happiness. But when it came to Diddy's adoption of Ava Baroni, there was a much darker reception. In the clip from 2020 shared on TikTok, Diddy is seen during a live session on Instagram asking Baroni to introduce herself to his followers. My name's Ava, I'm a Scorpio, the teen began, but Diddy interrupted her, asking for her last name. Ava Combs Baroni, she replied. Ava Baroni Combs? Yes, it's, it was breaking news. Diddy adopted a white child. My name's Ava. I'm a Scorpio. The rap mogul, aged 54, then announced that he had adopted the white child. In the video, Baroni humorously shared that she was on the streets before Papa Combs decided that he was going to be a caring man. I was on the streets, and then Papa Combs decided that he would like to be a caring man. She continued, saying that he saw her, picked her up, and invited her to stay with his kids, emphasizing her close bond with Diddy's twin daughters, Jessie and Delilah. While Diddy admitted that Baroni's account of events was a little bit borderline suspect, he asserted that he adopted her similarly to Madonna, Charlize Theron, and Sandra Bullock adopting their children. He explained that he felt she would benefit from having a black parent to support and care for her, mentioning that he received permission from Baroni's mother before proceeding with the adoption. Did you like Madonna? Adopted kids and everybody else adopted kids. Charlie Theron, everybody's ever adopted Sandra Bullock. At the time, we thought that Diddy was great to do this, right? Because there was a pandemic and children needed all the love they could get, but now people can't stop giving him the side eye for many reasons. Now, the video comes across as just being very weird and people had a lot to say. It was very weird indeed, but that's not the only big red flag here, because he compared this adoption process to that of Madonna, which is an interesting comparison because people have pointed out how there are some shady parts of Madonna's adoption as well. According to reports, Madonna didn't exactly adopt her black kids the legal way, unless last year it was revealed that she was being accused of illegal human trade and exploiting young ones by a charity organization called the Ethiopian World Federation, and some people claim that she tricked the parents into letting her have the kids by promising to give the children a great education in the US and then return their kids, only for her to turn around and adopt them, allegedly. So what's interesting is that this is what Diddy is basing his adoption on, which says a lot. Even more so, people are wondering why Diddy had mostly his sons in that video and not showing a lot of his daughters. I mean, Ava said that she wanted to play with Diddy's daughters, so why weren't they there? Just his sons. And don't even get me started on how uncomfortable Ava looked in the video. People are now wondering if she was uncomfortable because of the vibe in the room. Apart from Diddy, his sons have faced some concerning charges as well. Justin was named in Lil Rod's lawsuit, and Christian has a whole lawsuit of his own. And this has people guessing. But the biggest red flag here is how she seemed to disappear after that one video. I mean, sure, she was spotted out with Diddy's twins, Jesse and Delilah, a couple of times, but that was really it. She wasn't in any family photos or videos or anything like that. It's like she just disappeared. And considering that Diddy was insisting that she call him Papa Combs, you'd think that he would keep her around longer than five seconds. But considering the recent occurrences, the tf ficking allegations, and the allegations of Diddy treating women badly, well, fans are starting to wonder if Diddy might have alleged done something to Ava, and that's why she's been so silent. Fabulous situation. In 2017, during a Drink Champs interview featuring Fabulous and Jadakiss, Diddy made an uninvited comment. 
The conversation had been flowing smoothly until Fabulous started discussing how he had spent his birthday with his children. At this point, Diddy, in his typical fashion, couldn't resist interrupting and prodding Fabulous about whether he missed partying with him. Did you miss me though? Mm. For real, because we, I'm I saying, miss, it seems like a thing. I miss his birthday with party, Puff, man. Man, I'm talking about for him. your birthday. Huh? Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? In front of the camera and a live audience, Diddy's relentless curiosity pressured Fabulous into explaining why they had never partied together. The discomfort in Fabulous's body language became palpable as he squirmed in his seat. He seemed so out of his element that, for the remainder of the interview, he avoided making eye contact with Diddy and spent more time staring down at his plate than engaging in the conversation. Additionally, during the same interview, Diddy referred to Nori as Daddy several times and even made him blow the birthday cakes. Yeah, I love this drink. Where you put my bag? I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, where you put my bag? Daddy, yeah, I like when you oh, when you scrambling and scraping. When you when you scrambling and now this situation was not only embarrassing for these grown men, but also very creepy clearing his name on The Breakfast Club. Diddy's 2022 appearance on The Breakfast Club is undoubtedly one of his most heated interview moments, where he sought to address years of rumors about his business practices, particularly the accusation that he has a habit of exploiting artists under his label. Right from the start, Diddy set the tone, saying, The first of all is, is there has been negative propaganda put out about me that's not true. Charlemagne the God and the rest of the hosts didn't hold back. They pressed Diddy about long-standing rumors, with Charlemagne bluntly asking, So what you're saying is you don't steal from artists? Diddy's immediate response? Affirm never, as he claimed that his reputation as a scumbag or thief was unfounded. However, the room tensed up when Charlemagne followed up with a tough question. Why do these rumors persist with so many artists year after year? Diddy's defense was that people tend to point fingers when their money runs out and need someone to blame. To Diddy, it was all about people trying to break free from contracts and misrepresenting how the music industry works. He even went as far as calling a thief the worst thing in the world, saying that those who steal deserve to have their hands chopped off. It's no wonder this interview became one of the most talked about moments of 2022. The thief is the worst thing. His hand should be chopped. Her hand should be chopped off. His or her hand should be, that's the way I feel about somebody taking something from somebody that ain't dead. As the conversation heated up, Charlemagne didn't hesitate to bring up the elephant in the room, Diddy's financial relationship with Mace. According to rumors, Mace, who was one of Diddy's biggest artists in the late 90s, has been vocal about allegedly being shortchanged. But Diddy firmly denied these accusations, stating he had only done one album with Mace and sarcastically asked how much money people really thought he owed. I did one album with Mace. One album. How much money do you think I owe this guy? One album? And then he became a fake pastor? For context, artists like Mace have been fighting for their publishing rights for a long time now. You see, in the year 1999, Mace and Betha, better known as Mace, delivered a momentous announcement that sent shockwaves through the music industry. He declared his departure from Bad Boy Entertainment and the establishment of Sane Ministries, an acronym representing Saving a Nation Endangered. Asserting that he had undergone a profound spiritual encounter with God, he assumed the title of Minister Masse, symbolizing his newfound role and unwavering commitment to his religious calling. He also claimed he was, quote unquote, leading people, friends, kids and others down a path to hell, stating that he left to find God in his heart and follow him. In fact, during the peak of his career, thanks to the tremendous success of his album Harlem World, Mace chose to divulge this very information to a radio interviewer. I felt like I had a lot of money, but I didn't really know who I was. I knew I had to do something other than just hip-hop. Nonetheless, skepticism lingers regarding the motivations behind Mace's departure. Diddy had a reputation for not readily allowing artists to exit their contracts and maintain their affiliation with Bad Boy. Mace had, without a doubt, inked a significant and binding agreement, casting doubt on the circumstances surrounding his exit. Despite the absence of royalties during his break, Mace managed to stage a triumphant comeback after five years with his album Welcome Back under the Bad Boy label. Nevertheless, he swiftly signaled his intention to depart once more and skillfully orchestrated an interview with Puffy. In the course of this interview, he formally sought his release from the contract, adding another noteworthy twist to his eventful journey with the label. In 2016, Mace made a sensational comeback as part of a Bad Boy Records tour, wasting no time and publicly airing his grievances against his former boss. 
Shortly thereafter, he turned to Instagram for a live session to offer an explanation about the circumstances surrounding the incident. When I see the hurt and the pains of other people on Bad Boy, that motivates me to say something so I don't be deemed as a person. Despite moments of apparent reconciliation, the tension between them never truly seemed to dissipate, with Mace resuming his criticism of Diddy. This dynamic persisted even after Diddy delivered a heartfelt speech at the Grammys, demonstrating that their relationship remained complex and unsettled. Diddy said, Truth be told, hip-hop has never been respected by the Grammys. Black music has never been respected by the Grammys to the point that it should be. While Diddy's words resonated with many musicians, Mace notably did not share the same sentiment. The rapper took to Instagram, albeit in a post that has since been deleted, to voice his grievances about the alleged unfair treatment he had endured under the leadership of Bad Boy's label head. Your past business practices knowingly has continued purposely starved your artist and been extremely unfair to the very same artist that helped you obtain that Icon Award on the iconic Bad Boy label. In a candid interview, Mace took things a step further by disclosing that he had never received adequate compensation, even though he had been the creative driving force behind numerous hit songs for Bad Boy. This revelation brought to the fore his financial hardships within the label, further deepening the ongoing controversy surrounding his association with Bad Boy Records. The beats, you ain't getting the money, you oh, ain't sure. getting the publishing, you ain't getting the respect. And I don't think you're like that. No. Taking 50 Cent on a shopping spree, 50 Cent and Diddy have had a contentious relationship since the 2000s. While the Bad Boy Records founder co-signed the G-Unit rapper on numerous occasions, they were officially at each other's throats by the time Fifth dissed him outright in 2006 and accused him of being involved with the notorious big still unsolved murder. A decade later, 50 Cent accused Diddy of being involved with Tupac's unsolved murder too. Since 2017, 50 Cent has consistently posted memes speculating on Diddy's sexuality. On a 2018 episode of Drink Champs, he outright suggested that Diddy was gay and suggested that Diddy once asked if he could take him shopping. I asked 50 about that. I asked him to take him shopping. He told me he'd take me shopping. I looked at him like, what the f- what the- what'd you just say? What followed this was Diddy coming on air to explain himself. Yeah, I thought he needed some clothes. He doesn't even know what he's saying is like fruity. What? I'm a nice guy. <laughs> oh, oh, that's man. a nice gesture. Let's Let me go. get out of No, dude, take me to <laughs> do what a guy oh, says to a nice girl. <laughs> you know he loves me. I don't think he like it. Diddy's dangerous party confessions. When Diddy appeared on the Graham Norton show, things took a bizarre turn as he casually bragged about his infamous parties. Sure, we all know he loves to throw a bash, but the way he talked about it on this show was just plain unsettling. While chatting with Graham about his last Train to Paris album release, Diddy didn't hesitate to mention that he throws a party for pretty much any occasion. We have a party for everything. <laughs> you do, don't you? We love a party. Yes. We have a party for Tuesday. <laughs> Now, that might seem harmless enough, but then Graham brought up an incident at one of these parties that involved the fire brigade. Diddy laughed it off like it was no big deal. Apparently at one of his wild New York parties, a stripper's hair caught on fire because of some candles near the jacuzzi. I threw him at the party in the bathtub in the jacuzzi with this shit. One of the shit hair got caught on fire. Because of the candles. Yes, you heard that right. A woman's hair literally went up in flames and Diddy acted like it was just part of the fun. Uh, what? Instead of acknowledging how dangerous or just straight up wrong that situation was, Diddy brushed it off as if it was just another crazy story for him to laugh about. What's creepy is how he completely downplayed the fact that someone could have been seriously hurt. A woman's hair caught on fire at one of his parties, and instead of expressing any concern or remorse, he made it sound like just another wild night. It's one thing to throw big parties, but it's another to be so casual about dangerous and, quite frankly, inappropriate situations happening under your watch. The audience may have laughed, but let's be real, there's nothing funny about that. Diddy's attitude was disturbing, to say the least. He seemed more focused on keeping up his party king image than acknowledging the recklessness that led to someone nearly being set ablaze. It's a weird flex, and honestly, not a good look for someone who was supposed to be a responsible influential figure. But here's where it gets even more shady. Diddy then dropped a bombshell about how he used to party with none other than Prince William and Prince Harry when they were significantly younger. Trust me, they're off the list. <laughs> After now they're off the list, but you know, before when they were young bucks growing up and they were getting in a lot of trouble themselves, so hey, I was like, why don't you come hang out with me? Let that sink in for a moment. Diddy, a grown man, casually partied with the royal brothers when they were just coming up. What's even more messed up is that he admitted he now wants nothing to do with them since they've matured and gotten older. 
Diddy was all good with partying with the royal brothers when they were young, probably impressionable, and not fully aware of the chaos that surrounds his lifestyle, but now that they've grown up, become more responsible, and, let's be honest, probably realized his parties are just a hot mess waiting to happen, Diddy's not interested anymore. That just screams shady. It's almost like he preferred them when they were too young to know better. It says a lot about someone when they only want to be around people who aren't on their level mentally. Diddy trying to distance himself from William and Harry now that they're older and more mature only makes his past party behavior look even worse. It's as if he's admitting he doesn't want to be around people who might actually call him out on his creepy freak-off parties. In any case, with all these videos popping up again, a lot of people online are hoping they can be used in court to make sure Diddy faces the consequences for the crimes he's accused of. Anyway, that's it for this video folks, bye.